Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, we are gonna find out the indices for the direction D. As we can see, this is the direction D. So we'll be finding out the similar indices. Let's quickly get started and see how we can do that. The step one is to define the coordinate system as we all know, and we can see that the coordinate system is predefined here. This is the positive x-axis, this is the positive y-axis, this is the positive z-axis, and the point where all these axis lines touch each other is known as a region. So this point will be taken as a region throughout our calculations. All right, so as the coordinate system is defined, this is really important step whether it's predefined or not you have to acknowledge what that coordinate system is okay you have to acknowledge it first the step two is to find out the tail coordinates all right and for that purpose you should know where the tail is and we can see that the tail is located here and the head is located here so let's find out the tail coordinates and by coordinates by tail coordinates we mean that starting from a region how much we have to move along x y and z direction in order to reach the tail point so what is the map from origin as starting point to the tail point okay what is the map how much we have to move so this is what the coordinates mean so let's see how much we need to move in order to reach the tail point and the starting point is always origin so this is the origin and i need to reach this point so first of all i reach here here so for that purpose we need to move along x direction from one corner of the inner cell to the other corner of the inner cell along x direction which is one okay whenever you are moving from one corner of the inner cell to the other corner of the inner cell along x direction or along y direction or along z direction okay when you are moving along a particular axis direction from one corner to the other the motion is taken as one okay but it's not in other cases for example if you have you know if you would have been moved from this point to this point directly okay this is not parallel to x-axis or y-axis or z-axis you moved you know in some other direction so this motion is not taken as one but since we move from this corner to the this corner along x direction that is why this motion is taken as one keep that in mind okay now from this point onward i need to move how much to reach the head point it's half unit because they have already told us that this point is located at half point okay so we'll be using this information and in some other cases when the difficulty level increases they doesn't tell us that this point is half so there is a trick to know that for example um, for now you can see that this point is half so we, we need to move half unit along z direction to reach this point and we don't need to move along y direction so the y coordinate is zero let me first write down the tail coordinates and then we can discuss this point and the tail coordinates that we have found in this way is the one for x zero for y and one by two for z all right and now just for the matter of you know curiosity and adding you know expertise <laughs> uh, let us see that how we can know it like how we can determine that this point is half without, without knowing that it's half okay for that purpose let's first draw a line that we want to investigate this is the line of interest okay we'll remember it that it is the line of interest now this is one of the corner okay this is another corner okay starting from one corner we'll draw a line that will stop at you know this point of interest this is the line okay now from this line onwards we'll draw another line of this equal length and see that how much equal lengths we can make until we reach the other corner of the inner cell okay and we can see that only one more line could be drawn and we'll reach the other corner of the inner cell we cannot draw more lines okay it's like we can draw only two equal lines that are this okay only two equal lines could be drawn i'll make it clear later as well you will see when we could make three equal lines and when we could make the four equal lines and so on you can see we can draw only two equal lines which means that this point of interest is dividing this whole length from one corner of the inner cell to the other corner of the inner cell into two equal parts okay each part is half each part has half length so if you want to determine the coordinates then how we can give it coordinates since it's vertical line so the coordinates are referring to the z coordinates so this is at z is equals to zero this point is at one by two because this length is one by two okay and this length is also one by two so one this one by two plus this one by two gives the coordinate for this higher point which is one by two plus one by two 
okay so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is equals to 1 so the last point this point this point has one coordinate okay this point has one coordinate this point has half coordinate and this point the bottom one has the zero coordinates in that way we can determine the coordinates now what happens when we have you know a 1 by 3 as you can see in the in case of direction c let me make this point really clear to you because this is something that you should learn and understand so here you can see that uh, this is you know one another point and let me draw and this is another corner okay and we'll keep making the equal lengths until we reach the corner points and we want to know that how much equal lengths could be firm until we reach the other corner of the inner cell so this is one length okay this is one equal length and let me draw one more equal length and yeah this is one more equal length that is equals to this okay and only one more could be formed and we have reached the other corner of the inner cell okay we can see that we can draw only three equal lengths we draw three equal lengths and each length will be then one by three part of the total length and the total length is one so each length will be one by three part okay you can see and the bottom most will be at zero coordinate the first will be at one by three because this length is one by three as i told you because this whole length is one and each this sectional line is dividing this whole length into three equal parts so each part is one by three and we are giving the coordinates so we'll add up the lengths as we move up so this is at one by three coordinate and this is at one by three plus one by three coordinate which is two by three okay this point is at two by three now the last one is at three by three because it's actually equals to one by three this one by three plus one by three the middle one and the last one by three so it gives three by three 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 cancels out and we have one so the last point is at one coordinate i hope you are getting what i'm saying this is at one by three this is at two by three two by three and the last one is at one in that way you can find out the coordinates and point to any given line that is given to you okay whether it's forming 1 by 4 2 by 4 2 by 3 you can see here as well why it is 2 by 3 okay this length this and this okay this point is at 1 by 3 and this point is at 2 by 3 and the last point is at 1 okay if you understand this you can solve literally any problem related to directional miller indices it's really easy then if you understand this method you can easily determine any kind of you know miller indices and with any kind of you know level of difficulty so i hope you get my point always define um the point of interest okay just as i did draw the corner points and start drawing the equal lines and see that how much equal lines you can form until you reach this corner point so you will determine how much equal parts you have formed draw the reference line in which the coordinate will be zero this is the z is equal to zero coordinate here hence will be one part it's two parts and it's three parts okay even if, if it's dividing into four parts then each would be one by four then two by four then three by four and the last will be at four by four and so on i hope you got it and uh, <laughs> i hope you have understand that how we can do that so the tail coordinates are done now the step four is to find out the head coordinates and we can see where the head is located all right we can see that where the head is located the head is located at this position starting from origin region how much we have to move in order to reach the head head point okay and uh, they they have already told us that they are half and half coordinates of this point but whether they are for x y or z we have to determine it and you can see that this head point is located at this ground you know uh, plane and at this ground plane z is equals to zero holes okay this is the ground plane and here the z coordinate is zero 
the vertical component is zero so if z is zero then half and half are for the other axis lines which is x and y it means that this half is for x and this half is for y okay and they have already told us their coordinates so we don't have to worry at all and we now know that we have to move half unit along x and half unit along y to reach this head point and they have already told us okay and we can easily determine it also using the method that i have told you people so you know you can draw um this is the length one okay and this is the point of interest so we can also draw a well length one which is like that and we can see that this is the total length one and this is dividing it into half so this is the point where we have to make a turn okay this is the point where we have to make the turn and this is at half along x okay at x is equals to half because this is halfway of this total length so at x is equals to half we will make a turn and we will want we want to reach this point and you can see the boundary points this is where the y starts and this is where the y ends okay one corner to the other corner and you can see that this is right at the middle the final point is right at the middle and hence you have to move only half unit along y to reach this point so you know this was a bit tricky but the main essence is same all right so we can see that the head coordinates are done we have calculated the head coordinates to be half along x half along y and zero along z all right in this way the head coordinates are calculated now let's move towards the step four here the step four is to subtract the head coordinates with tail coordinates okay head minus tail coordinates that's the operation that we are gonna perform and i'm gonna draw a column in here here will be do the subtraction for x coordinates here we'll be doing it for y and here we'll be doing it for z this is x this is y and this is z okay so let's do that first we'll have the head coordinate minus then tail coordinate so for x half minus one then for y half minus zero order matters okay zero minus one by two so one by two minus one is actually minus one by two one by two minus zero is one by two zero minus one by two is minus one by two so these are the coordinates that we have got so far and not coordinates numbers only <laughs> okay these are numbers and we can see that the fractions are involved here so the step five is to remove fractions if we have any so since we have fractions so we'll remove the fraction and fractions could be removed by multiplying the LCM of denominators with each of these numbers. So we can see that denominators have 2, 2 and 2. So we have 2 as the only number in the denominator and 2 is the LCM as a result. So 2 is the LCM we'll multiply with 2 multiplying by 2 with each of these numbers. These numbers so it's like minus 1 by 2 multiplied by 2 1 by 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1 by 2 multiplied by 2 2 2 cancels out 2 2 cancel 2 2 cancel so it's minus 1 1 and minus 1 and we can see that they are in least integer form they cannot be divided further into a lesser number for example um, if we have got like 4 2 2 okay we can divide them further by 2 to reduce them into least integer form but we cannot divide these numbers further they are in least form so these are the final miller indices okay so one bar negative numbers are represented by a bar over the number one bar then one for y and then z these are the miller indices of direction d and d all right uh, i hope you got it that is it for this video we have successfully calculated the miller indices of all of these directions in this problem and i hope you got the point for least integer form okay there are the some cases when we can divide all these numbers by a single number and it reduces them further into some integers okay so we'll keep on dividing until a state is reached where further division is not possible
okay so we can see they, that they cannot be reduced further all right so that is it goodbye take care